How much are you having this conversation with the media partners that you work with, with those within YouTube thinking, how can you harness artificial intelligence right now to give us the content we want? So we are having many conversations, as you would imagine, around AI and how it can be applied in the media space and in the sports world. We at YouTube have been using it for years in terms of matching content and recommending content, uh, looking at our roadmap and how we really um, create that personalization. Mm. Our content partners have their own plans and we collaborate with them. Obviously, all of us are being you know, very uh, responsible in our approach, um, but we're excited about the potential applications. And, and sharing there, because you are, as you say, in co on constant conversation with the media partners, would you ever give data to them? How do you think about the relationship and how it flourishes, both of you at the same time? So Google obviously has very uh, strict privacy policies and we are always adhering to those. They're negotiated as part of our contracts. Uh, and so we're sensitive to that, but we're also very you know, open to optimizing experiences within those um, parameters. Laurie, good afternoon to you. Good morning from San Francisco. When I think about YouTube, I think about content creators and bringing their content to the platform. But increasingly, the questions we're getting asked from our audience on the show is what YouTube's going to use in the field of generative AI, text to images. Is that something that YouTube's working on? So again, we're just exploring many different things. Uh, we see a lot of potential. Uh, we see potential with our own company. We see potential with our partners. And obviously, YouTube is a composition of creator content, media content, music content, sports content. Um, so there are many different uh, partners that have ideas around it. Uh, and again, it's ultimately all about the consumer and how we use technology in many different ways um, to optimize the experience every time they come to YouTube. Laurie, we, we always want to give our audience the opportunity to ask questions. So when I tweeted that you were coming on the show, there was a lot of interest from Twitter users about uh, the recommendation engine. And when you think about sports highlights, live events, short form video, what are you guys doing around the recommendation engine driven by AI? So a lot of what we do uh, for our viewers is make sure that every time they come to YouTube, the format of content that they're interested in watching, as well as the business model that they'd like to consume that content under is available on our platform. So as has been mentioned, we, had, we have ad-supported video on demand, long form, short form, shorts. We have you know, transactional VOD, we have pay television, we have primetime channels, which we launched last year, subscription, ad-supported. So, it's really about creating that ecosystem where every time they come, they find what they want. And of course, there's an algorithm that as people continue to visit frequently, that algorithm is able to know what they would be likely interested in watching and that content will be served up. I mean, Laurie, that's why you're growing. Well, most live TV isn't growing. You've been, sh Moffat Nathanson, I think, shown in a light that YouTube is. I'm interested in the reason also you're growing is the content you're serving, NFL, NFL Sunday Ticket in particular. How are you starting to lure in those people who want to be watching those sorts of games from DirecTV? Is it, is it about the right price point? How are you deciding where you tackle those people for that content? So many of those people have already been watching highlights and clips of the NFL on YouTube, on our ad-supported platform. What we're doing for the first time ever is offering Sunday Ticket under two different uh, platforms. So on YouTube Main, you can buy it through primetime channels, and you can also buy it through uh, YouTube TV as an add-on. And under DirecTV's model, you had to be a DirecTV subscriber in order to purchase Sunday Ticket. You do not have to be a YouTube TV subscriber in order to purchase Sunday Ticket from YouTube. You can do it off of YouTube Main. And what about the... Well, but people want to get inside information on their favorite players, on basically the content creators that are out there surrounding NFL. How do you think the world of influencers is going to meet suddenly the world of live TV in the way that you can probably bundle it? So this is one of the areas we're most excited about because we recognize that creators are a really, really interesting way to present sports content, TV, film content. And in fact, with Sunday Ticket and with the NFL, we've seen a great opportunity to integrate. So at the NFL draft, we had 32 creators there. And Dude Perfect actually announced one of the draft picks, um, which was very well received. Our audience um, skews younger than other pay TV platforms. And, and that younger audience 
watches creators in addition to watching TV, film, and sports content. So it's an integration that they embrace, and it's a way for us to really bring all of the power of YouTube together. Laurie, our colleagues at Bloomberg News reporting over the weekend that Apple, Netflix are looking at the long term of NBA rights. And one of the things they reported is that Fox, for example, if they entered the fray, could be interested in offering uh, a stream through someone else's platform. How does YouTube think about the NBA going forward? So we are very, very, very strong partners uh, with the NBA, again, on uh, platforms such as AVOD, where we have clips and highlights, but also on YouTube TV, where we carry all of the networks that currently have the rights for the NBA. Um, we carry NBA League Pass on primetime channels. We were the first streaming service to offer WNBA League Pass. Um, and offer that on a uh, subscription basis to consumers. So we have that partnership in place. Uh, you know, obviously we are looking to uh, sports as, as we just discussed with NFL Sunday Ticket as an opportunity to continue to deliver uh, rights and games to our viewers who are very, very sports uh, centered. But at the same time, there's nothing, you know, to announce in regards to uh, rights discussions with the NBA, but we do value their partnership and we'll continue to uh, keep our sports fans top of mind. Those media partners that you now work with, you've worked for in your previous lives. You were with the Disney, you were with a and &E. I'm also noticing that you were NBC Universal. What's interesting is recently a key executive from NBC Universal has moved across to go and had Twitter. Who do you see as your competition? You must have worked with Linda at some point. How do you see sort of this ending up who will win out or indeed can everyone from an offering of sports or content and the way that we want to be consuming it? So basically, I think there's room for many platforms. And uh, I did work with Linda and obviously, um, you know, she has moved to Twitter and, and there's value in the Twitter platform. There's value in the YouTube platform. There's value in Netflix and Disney Plus and all of these services. What I really like about YouTube is that we distribute uh, many of these services and we make it easier for consumers to find them and to transact on them. And so I think people are very interested in different types of content under different business models. And we always put the customer at the center of the equation. And it goes back to what I said earlier. If they come to YouTube and they want to watch any of that content you just mentioned from Disney or NBC Universal um, on an ad supported basis, we have that. If they want to subscribe to a direct or consumer channel, we have that. If they want to watch a linear TV channel, we have that. Uh, and so that is the value we bring to the media space that does have a lot of players uh, who we consider to be great partners.